So I'm going to talk about we have a new PNP sample for Outlook, and this sample was actually demoed a little bit by Juan. I think it was back at the January, maybe the February call. Basically, what it lets you do is if I send a new message, it can display this little info bar that says, hey, we see you don't have a signature. Do you want to set a signature? And I can click on this and it brings up the task pane where you can add some info about yourself and then save that. And then I can see these different template types. There's A, B, and C, and I can test them out, see what they look like. Um, I can sign them to various actions, and these are basically going to be events that I'll show in a second that will get fired. So I can pick like different templates for these, you know, based on if, if I'm sending a new mail or if it's a reply, and then save it, and it's saved. So now, if I send a new mail, we should see that um, I got my signature showing up there, which is being set uh, from that add-in. So there's a couple things that were happening there. You saw like the little info bar appeared without the task pane being displayed. So that's event-based activation where you get a runtime to handle events. And then we also use the set signature API to do this piece where you get your signature in there. Um, so let me switch over to the code over here in visuals in VS Code. Um, so there's a lot of code in here. So I'm just going to point out the more interesting parts of this. So like in the manifest, you'll need to configure it so that you can respond to the events that are coming from Outlook. So if you go down to this run times section, where you want to set your auto run runtime and this configures it to this configures Outlook so that it's going to send you events when there's a new mail item. Um, and then this override is what makes it work on uh, Windows 10 on the desktop. So basically, this is uh, this first one sets up if you're running on the web uh, because it's going to load an HTML page. And then if you're running on the desktop, it doesn't load the HTML page. It goes directly to your JavaScript. And you can see that mapped at the bottom of the manifest. Um, let's see, where's the, here it is. So we can see like our auto run is going to load this auto run web HTML. So that loads for on the web. And then if you if you're running, someone's running on desktop, then it will just go directly to auto run shared.js and just load that. And then the two events are right up here where you have our launch events and we say, hey, if there's a new message being composed, call check signature or if it's a new appointment. So we handle both uh, appointments and messages. They both go, they get mapped to this check signature function. In the structure of the project here, all the runtime stuff is under one folder and the task pane stuff is under another. So you basically think of these as two different runtimes that are getting loaded. So this runtime gets loaded just for handling the events. And we saw that this HTML page, auto run web HTML is what's used when you're on the web. And in here you can see it's loading auto run shared and auto run web. So what I wanted to point out here is that if you're running on the web or if you're running on desktop on Windows 10, you might want to you might have different code that's running. And so what this is is auto run shared is all the functions that get used both for on the web and on desktop. Auto run web, this JavaScript file, is functions that are only used when you're on the web. And the reason for that is what if you use the set signature API. When you're on the web, it will work for message items, but it doesn't work for calendar appointments. So that's why in this auto run web JS, when we're going to insert the signature, we actually do a check and we say, hey, is this an appointment? If it is, we're just going to write directly into the body and not use the signature API. If we know it's a mail item, we'll call add template signature, which calls the set signature API. And then in auto run shared, we have that same function insert auto signature, but if we know we're running on desktop, then we just set the signature because we know it works on both events. And I'm sorry, yeah, both calendar events and uh, new mail items. And you can see down here when we add our template signature, we will eventually call the set signature async method. This is the preview API. So that's one interesting thing is, that is sometimes you'll want to think about having different functionality based on if you're on the web or not. And so this shows how you can 
uh, create a shared context as well as a web specific context. Another thing to show is that there was that little image in the logo in the set signature. Let's see if I still have air, like this little diamond image that we insert. There's two ways you can put that in. So if we go to the templates, I'm going to start from there. There's three of these functions for each template. So we have get template A, get template B and C, and they just return the HTML that we're going to embed into the email. Um, so the interesting part of this is just where we create that logo. And there we're going to use this image source set to CID. This means we're going to embed the image into the mail item itself. And so you'll see here where we set that tag up for the image. And then we put in the name of it, which here is, uh, we'll use a specific name. Up here we set it to sample logo.png. And then when we return from this function, we return this object that says, well, here's the HTML. And then here's the actual image that we're embedding. So it's just a base 64 encoded image for that diamond. And then here's the file name to use. The second way you can do it, if you don't want to embed it, is you can just reference it directly with an old fashioned image source tag and point to your server, which in this case is localhost, and just grab it. That's probably the most typical way to refer to an image. So I just want to point out there's two ways to do it. And then that affects uh, back up here where we insert the signature. Um, we're going to check. So we're going to say, hey, if there's a base64 image, I need to add that attachment because it's being embedded. So we'll call this add file attachment from base64, pass it the encoded string, pass it the name of the file, set it to be inline. And then that, once it's attached, I'll get a callback. And then at that point, that's what we call set signature and pass it that template A. Now that's what happens with template A. If it was template B, we go down to the else statement and we say, oh, the image wasn't embedded. So in that case, we just directly call set signature and we don't have to deal with trying to insert the image. Okay, so that's uh, interesting to point out. And let's see, I think that was it. Uh, I'm not gonna go through the task pane code. It's pretty straightforward. There's one pane that's for editing, which just has all those fields you saw you can fill out for job title and your display name and so on. And then there's the page that will actually assign the signature, so you can pick which templates you want and what actions to put them with. So that, that part's pretty straightforward. I mostly just wanted to cover what's happening with the events and setting the signature. So if you want to check it out, go look at um, the PNP-Office Add-ins repo. And if you go down to samples, I'll look at signature. You can see the readme, shows you how to get it set up, and it walks you through some of the code stuff I talked about. This also goes very closely with this document that talks about configure Outlook add-in for event-based activation. So you can follow this document, you can refer to the sample. So hopefully all that information helps you getting set up with Outlook set signature. Mm -hmm.